Feeling like taking a coffee break? So do I. What about we talk about JEP392 about JPackage? This JEP has been delivered in the JDK16 in March 2021 as a final and permanent feature. As you know, JEPs are not just about language features or APIs, they can also describe the tools, and this is the case for JPackage. As with all JEPs, the JEP392 begins by describing its goals. There are three, so let us go through them. The main goal is to create a packaging tool, that's the name JPackage, I guess, with three features. First feature to support native packaging formats to give end users a natural installation experience. And this is tricky because this natural installation experience depends precisely on the machine you are working on. The supported formats are MSI and EXE for Windows, PKG and DMG for macOS, and DEB and RPM for Linux. Second feature, to allow launch time parameters to be specified at packaging time. And third feature is to provide a packaged application that can be invoked directly from the command line or programmatically with the tool provider API. As for more of the JEPs, there are also non-goals for this JEP. First, JPackage is based on a legacy tool called Java Packager, which was a Java FX application. For the record, Java Packager was a packaging tool distributed with Oracle JDK 8 up to 11. Second, cross-compilation is not a goal. So if you need to generate an RPM file, you need to run JPackage on a Linux machine. Some of the features of Java Packager are not supported by JPackage. Namely, all the JavaFX specific features are not supported, and also the support for Java Web Start has been removed. Java Web Start has been deprecated in Java 9 and removed in Java 11, so no more support for Java Web Start. There are other features that are not supported by JPackage, for instance, JDEPS, which is used to determine the modules your application requires. The ANT plugin is not supported by JPackage neither, and there is no support for a native splash screen during the installation. And there is also a mention about the JMOD tool in a JEP. You can use the JMOD tool to create and manipulate JMOD files. So let us spend two minutes on JMOD files. You know that modules can be packaged in modular jar files. In a case where you have a native images or other files, like configuration files, for instance, or license files, you can use a JMOD file. The JMOD tool is intended for these modules or for modules that you intend to link with the JLink tool to a native image. The JMOD files it generates are transportable, but not executable. You cannot use them to run your application. It turns out that license or legal files are processed in a special way by the JMOD tool. You can specify them with the specific option, legal notices. Well, this feature is not supported by JPackage. Talking about a tool is nice, but actually seeing it is even better, no? So let us see this JPackage in action. Let us first create a very simple, very basic application, some kind of hello world to show how things are working. The first app I'm going to show you is really super simple. It's a very dumb application. All it does is that it echoes what you have passed as an argument when launching this application. I am first going to create a jar to all the files of this application. So jar, create. Can you tell me more about what you're doing? And put the jar in a file. We are going to call it dumb app no module because this application is not a modular application. The main class is org from our jpack main. We are going to move to the out production dumb app no module 
directory and take everything that is in it. This is the jar file that was produced and we can run it java-jar plus the name of the jar file. It does not print anything because we haven't provided any argument when we launched this application but if I pass hello as an argument then hello will be echoed on the console. So now that we have the jar file we can make it an executable installer for this application. The exact command is jpackage, the input directory is the current directory, then we need to give a name to our application, dump app no module, then we can give a version, version 1.0, and when installing the application we probably want to choose the directory in which we are going to install this application. It's a console application, so we need to open a console when the application is launched and we need to tell the packager that the main jar is the jar that we have. If you just run this command as is on a Windows machine, odds are that you will have this error message, which is the Wix tool has not been found. Fortunately, jpackage gives you the link where you can download the Wix tools, so let me do that. run our jpackage again. It may take several seconds to run and once this is done it creates an executable file which is the installer you can use to install this application. So this is how you can create an application when you have a non-modular jar. Here I just added the second project with the exact same code as the first one but also a module info.java thus making it a modular application. So let me run jpackage to package the second application. I am first going to create the jar in the exact same way as previously. The jar has been properly created. And now I am going to run jpackage with the name of the app. This time it's dumb app module, the version, which is also 1.0. I want my user to be able to choose the directory in which this application will be installed. I want the console to be opened. I also want a shortcut on the desktop. This time I can specify a module path and this module path will be the current directory. And the module I want to add is this module. And the main class in this module is all from our jpack.main. Let me check the executable that has been created. And you can see that the modular one is of course smaller than the non-modular one. So let me run uh, this installer. Now I have this nice installer windows. Uh, so yes, I want to install that. Yes, I want to install it in uh, program files dump app module. Let me copy this, by the way. The installer will install everything that is needed. Uh, and after a while will tell me that my application has been properly installed on my Windows machine. This app has been installed in this directory. And indeed, here I have an executable file that I can execute, and that is executed my main class. Now, if I pass hello world, I will see that the two strings of character have been properly passed to my main class. But this is still an executable file. You do not need any kind of local Java installation to run this file properly. The second application I would like to package has a graphical user interface. Suppose you want to visit France and you want to give talks at French jugs. Well, we have 20 jugs in France and of course you probably need to save on your travel costs. So I just made an app for you. Let us package this application. So I have here an app called Traveling Jug Speaker that is supposed to help the jug speaker to optimize the travels among jugs and I put all the options I need to pass to jpackage in a file and jpackage will be able to read this file to get all the options it needs. So to run the package in this context you need to pass the name of the file in which you've written all the options with this add sign just in front of it. Let me take a look at what has just been generated. So this traveling jug speaker installer has been generated. Let me run it. Yes, I want to install that. Yes, it's going to be installed here. Uh, 
the traveling jug speaker shortcut has been properly added to the desktop so let me double click on it you have a nice map of france here you can draw the jugs from france 15 out of 20. those are the cities that have been chosen let me choose another set of cities by the way and change this set and if you click to start your optimizer will start optimizing the best travel the shortest path among all those cities this is how the traveling jug speaker application is working natively on this machine so you saw how gpackage can package a modular or non-modular application i would like to show you how you can create an app to handle specific files recognized by their extension we are going to create the duke viewer app able to display duke files and see how you can do that don't you think that duke deserves some kind of special app i do so here is the duke displayer it's a very simple application to create the installer i just added this option called file associations which points to this associations.properties file. So let me show you this file. It is just this simple file that tells that all the files with the Duke extensions can be handled by this application. So this application is just packaged as all the other applications we saw. So I'm not going to show that to you again. Once you've installed it, you have this Duke displayer shortcut on your desktop. And here I have several Duke files and if I just double click on one of them, you can see that this Duke Displayer application has been launched, opening this image file in this window. So now Duke indeed has its own app, which is really well deserved. And with this, I am out of coffee. So that's it for today. Talk to you soon.